So in the last episode, we sort of talked about the, the it would be handy to have an AI or, or be smarter. So even if the AI doesn't come into effect and the church of server goes, the AI is coming. It is. But even if it doesn't come in your lifetime, you'll have been far more effective a human being at making the world a better place. Because yeah. given that our basic drive is survival, and then you've got survival of children. Okay, so when you've got that dialed in, you've still got time left over to do something interesting. It's sort of like, well, what did you do as a hobby when you were my age, Grandad? Uh, I tried to make the world a better place, and we, we did things for a thing called the Church of Server. What's that, Grandad? And he goes, well, okay, I've got the holy book around here somewhere. <laughs> and just go, right, but this is not to be taken literally. If you think there's some bollocks in here, you ought to edit this. <laughs> yes. Please, please, <laughs> this please doesn't add fit. Yeah, just, you know, but all the other holy books are bound and sealed. Yes, they are. And yours is a ring binder, Grandad. Yes, I know. It was always designed. I, I, I think it should always be a ring binder. That should be the, the stationary symbol of the Church of Server. Yeah. Because, yeah. A, you can add to it. And, you know, you, you can take bits out. And it's all like, well, that isn't relevant anymore. We, 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 were, we became vegan eons ago. You know, brilliant. Okay, then take out the bit about, wouldn't it be nice if we had vat-grown meat? Yeah, because we already solved that you, problem. You, like, the, you know, the, if, the, they, if the they invent that machine, yeah. if they invent that machine in Star Trek and I get my and I get my, my replicator, then we're sorted. Yeah. We don't need that bit. Computer, make me a Big Mac, but make it good. You make the Big Mac <laughs> like the picture, not like the one you get at the shop. <laughs> Zing. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know um but yeah you know so uh, we're so we've been working on a few tangible things recently haven't we we're, we're yeah, we working have. on t-shirts we're working on t-shirts that everybody can make their own oh the thing about the ring binder a it can be updated and b you can decorate your ring binder however you want you can put anything on the cover yeah you can put a picture of for everything from a picture of i don't know um jesus if you if you think you know it's sort of like it's, isn't making the world a better place that's what i did jesus i didn't spend a lot of time in church but i went out and told people that it'd be nice if they were all nice to each other yeah which is which kind is, of what you said yeah kind of being positive well well says jesus you've got me there you didn't spend any time in church but you did you know go and try and help people so yeah. cool you know we're good you know I <laughs> you listen you listened brilliant you know or, or the Buddha going, well, you know, and how did you feel at the end of your life? Oh, well, Buddha, I felt like I'd actually done fucking something useful something with useful. my life. Well, says the Buddha, that was all that you could hope for. You know, you know, even if you went to, to you, you know, you get to speak to God. If it's, a, you know, even if it's, you know, not even if it's, if it's a Muslim God, say, and you're, you're in the presence of, you know, the, the creator of the universe and the creator of the universe says, I didn't see you in a mosque. And you go, well, it's like this, um, your, your individualness. Um, I've, uh, you know, I've, 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 I decided to make the world a better place because you created something that was amazing and beautiful and infinite in its variety. And I wanted it to stay that way instead of a smoking ruin. Oh, okay, says God, you're, we're good. <laughs> you know, so i'm just putting it in a context that people that do have faith and can understand really and it's just like you know okay if if there is we don't know you know there's no way we can know we can't know if the universe is self-aware we've no means of communicating with it we can't you know but don't listen to a human you know if there is a divine spark, try and find that bit within you, that bit that wants to be nice to everybody, because we get a lot more done if we're nicer to each other. Sure. If you, and, and, and and the notion of the notion isn't to to say you know this is what is right. The notion is to say think for yourself what you think is the truth. Think what you sort of yeah. think is a benefit or a positive in the nature, and then do that thing. Try and make that thing part of it. So if you think that eating more vegetarian food or meat vegan food is going to be good for the universe do that thing if you think that you know um giving access to people in libraries books is a good thing then do that thing if you think that you know you know however it is you're going to support the the the, the universe do that thing if you think getting an education is going to be good for you and good for the world because you're going to use it for a positive do that thing do whatever it is that that you I think mean, is the right thing but try and make it a definable right thing that everyone's going to think is being a right thing not a like you know holier than thou but uh yeah. holier with everyone i mean we've got these systems in place these capitalist systems these the paper the paper ais um we've got those in place and they stop someone in a sainsbury's going this sandwich is about to go in the bin because it's on its sell-by date and i'm about to close the store 
so I can't sell it tomorrow legally. Immediately outside the store is a starving person. Now, the paperwork AI wants me to throw this sandwich in the bin. The divine spark in me says, give the homeless guy the fucking sandwich. Now, because I don't give the, pay the homeless guy the sandwich, and I put the um, sandwich in the bin, because my paperwork AI says I must in order to make the non-human hedge fund more money, which is what we're doing, um, I then become angry with the homeless person, even though it's the homeless, not the homeless person's fault that they don't, they don't have a home and they could quite do with a sandwich. But I, I externalise my anger at myself into that person and then when someone comes along and demonizes homeless people i agree with them because i want a good reason to feel angry with them you know i am white my ancestors treated people with darker skin than me very very badly indeed wherever they fucking found them in order for me not to feel bad about that and think i should be much nicer to people that are a different skin tone than me you know i can't make up for it and you know i feel you know, shame in that when I have to read the history of my own culture, they went and did all these oppressive things. So I either lie or I demonize those people that look not look different to me because I'm smart enough to comprehend that terrible things were done to people that look like that. And, ter and maybe their grandparents remember terrible being that things being done to them or things that were just outright mean or racism or um, uh, economic oppression or fear of them actually voting because they're going to be good and angry now that they haven't had the vote for so long all this shit all these fears and um, shame get externalized and those people are demonized you know if you don't if, you know fair enough massive immigration can totally overwhelm a country's resources and that can be frightening so why not spend some money or work out some way of making sure that where those people are from isn't torn apart by war or isn't economically devastated by a decision that a paperwork AI made one year to outsource its uh, to move the production of its widget from Mexico to Southeast Asia <coughs> thus causing unemployment causing unemployment to the people that sold goods and services to the people that worked in that factory causing those people to want to economically migrate and migrate or sell weapons to someone that we know is a bad person uh, who then uses it on his own people to suppress a, 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 an election so he gets elected in inverted commas again for life or whatever the fuck he wants because he needs to have power and, and then they leave because they try and leave their country because it's torn apart by fucking war if you made all those people's lives a lot better, for for a start, the sort of people that say, that shout absolute gibberish and and get into power on the on the back of a military coup because they've convinced some people with guns that they're in the right, then that never happens again. If everybody's got enough to eat and everybody's got decent education and clothing and shelter and all the things that we need, and they all learn to get along with one another, and Mr. Maslow's pyramid gets ticked on every box for everybody. Yeah. You, you kind of wipe out war for a start. Yeah, and, and, you, and you also wipe out a lot of other things too. You know, you wipe out a lot of, of negatives as well. Right, you wipe out disease, you wipe out ignorance, you wipe out illiteracy, you know. Yeah. You, you know, if you start wiping out disease, people start easing up on the number of children that they want to have. If you build up technology to look up, you know, we can redress the imbalance in our population. We can, we can mourn the things that are extinct and we can, you know, but you can't just say, oh, plenty's extinct. We might as well make a few more things extinct. Well, you know, and we become glib because we're frightened or we're, sh we're full of shame. And it's like, and by not, by trying to do something about things that you feel are important, you, you feel less shame. Yeah. That's why people that work for charities don't generally tend to be all that racist. People doing the actual work because they know they're physically changing the world for the better. They don't tend to be racist. They don't tend to be homophobic. But people that are, are, are there's a different, and there's a difference between charity and there's a different, you know, it's the whole Jesus uh, talking about the parable of the the woman that gives two farthings to the poor box and the man that gives seven gold coins and shit, you know. And you know, a lot of people won't give to charity because they don't believe it's going to go there or it's not going to actually function and stuff like that. And yeah, some charities are run, you know, to make money. Yeah, well, I mean, you've, only the, got to, the... you've only got to look at the you've only look at the the evangelists in America. How how they run how are they run evangelist churches yeah. in America? Whereby you know the God the needs is... me to own a Learjet. Yeah, you know, like, type you know, stuff. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's ridiculous. 
Yeah, so it's let's do some good. You know, we need we need an idea of what we can do that's good. But I mean, first off, you know, let's let's go right. What has humanity done well? First off, I think we all need to be librarians. Hmm. That's something that everybody can do. You know, and maybe we also need to get we need to be outside of the system before we can demonstrate that it could be better. Yeah. It's very, very, very hard to do. I mean, there's no way you can get truly outside of it. I mean, I would like to see a future in which the idea of land ownership was stupid. You know, just where people couldn't understand it again. Because back in the day, hundreds of thousands of years ago, if you said, I own this acre of land, uh, an indigenous person, wherever on earth you happen to be, they'd look at you like, I don't understand. I don't understand. It literally, it ha- literally isn't, and I don't understand. Not a, not yeah, a, they, not, I, a I just, not a, not a, I don't understand what, how you can think you own this, but literally, like, what do you mean this thing is separate from you? Yeah. And, you know, sort of like all sorts of terrible things. So we do have to play within that system. We need to get out from under it. You know, we need to, you know, get out from under this paying bills thing and having services delivered to us without and and us working inside these machines we need to be outside of these paper ai's you know so you know and it's very hard not to work for a corporation because they they've they've grown to a, a state where they provide everything for us uh you know sort of like this is where the whole off grid thing comes in this is why you know it's, it's being outside of it and just going okay so we had to buy land but now we're not we're growing our own food we have our own chickens we've got eggs we've got, you know we've got all that running around maybe even go completely vegan i don't yeah. know i don't know if you i don't know if it's possible to off grid grow everything in order for you to be vegan if someone said you'll have no bills for the rest of your life we'll automate the farming as much as we can you'll have about 15 minutes of actual work to do a day the rest of the time you can spend raising your kids or your grandkids yeah and you'd be like all right so the electricity is free, yep. Yeah. Um, we've managed to wangle some kind of free internet, yep. Yeah, that's all sorted, and we've got all the information we could ever have. So I, you know, I can go into one of the community sheds that's just, you know, that's got the relevant tools in and make a thing and go. I made a thing. I just took environment, naturally available environmental materials, and and created something that wasn't there before. Whether it's art or a new machine or a, a clever bit of circuitry or a, a program or something. Okay, yeah. And then, what did you do the rest of the time? I just hung out with the kids and asked them what they would make if they could make a cool machine. Yeah. And then when I said they could make their own machines, and then I taught them how to make machines. Yeah. And they thought that was cool. And they thought that was cool. And then they got bored of that because they thought there were already enough machines in the world, and they were quite okay with 15 minutes of work a day. And they just went on and created art instead. And I considered that a win. <laughs> that was my <laughs> day. Because yeah. that is a win. Yeah. And then server turned up and went, you've done really well. <laughs> and, every, and then we went and explored space. Yes. We, tried, we went out and, and, and do you know what? I think we, the sort of like, I, fuck the prime directive. If you really got it dialed in and mm. society was proven, that meth- mode of society provably worked universe wide. Because you basically, and when people said, ah, but we need to fight with them for the resources. What if you didn't need resources? Mm. What if you, here's a box, it just, pr- it just energy. It's just energy. It's a whopping, <laughs> Yeah. You just point this shiny thing at the sun and it just zips it. You don't have to drill for oil or coal or fucking crystals or nothing. None of that shit. There are gigantic energy sources just right. Actually, the original energy sources are the best. Whenever we try and use something that's derived from the energy resource, it goes bad. Nuclear power, all that sort of shit. Just the light will fall on your thing. And yeah, we'll just do that. And then the energy just creates whatever widget you need. You know. That's what we need. You so, know, like that's, oh, you know. oh, oh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a gun. Well, okay. And so I made a gun. And the bullets, yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna shoot that person over there. Why? <laughs> They're in competition for me for resources. They have one of these boxes. <laughs> They're taking up the space. They don't need to own any land. The reason to own land is so you can grow the resources that you now no longer need. Ah. Oh. They're different yeah. to me. Well, you'll oh. think you'll find when you go out into the university when you try and explain that someone's the color of someone's skin was a reason that you wanted to kill them um, was pretty fucked up considering they've got three heads. 
Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about people with three fucking heads then? Well, you know, if you can't tolerate someone being a slightly darker shade that you can actually biologically and physically explain because they, their ancestors come from a different part of one tiny little fucking ignorant rock. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, we'll go with that. But I need a gun to protect myself. Against who? Well, people that feel hostile towards me. Why would they feel hostile towards me? Because I've got more stuff. They can have as much stuff as they want. I think you'll find once you've printed your 50th Big Mac, you're tired of them. You know, just, <laughs> no, enough. So so you made this, you made the replicator, the, the, the ideal of your site. No, we didn't even have to really try too hard to invent the replicator. The replicator just came about once we start, stop, started chilling out yeah. and thinking about what was actually important. <laughs> what was and we got an AI. The AI, made, we made a thing that made that. How's, how fucked up is that? We made an electronic brain and gave it some robot arms and some components, and it just built one. It just said, would you like one of these now, please? And we said, thank well, you. Well, how do we get our own AIs? It's yeah. sort of like, well, just just have a copy of the AI. Yeah, here Add it is. To it. Yeah. Add Here's our holy book. It's empty. Well, you can make it up as you go along. Ask the <laughs> AI. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just insane that we're not doing better as a species. Yeah. It's not like people haven't turned up and said, you know what? Try this a is bit broken. harder. Yeah, just, just try a bit harder, everyone. Just see if this works. Maybe, maybe being nice to people will work. Maybe, maybe think about what you're going to say before you open your mouth. Like, that might be a good idea. Might maybe if you, if you knew everybody was going to be nice to you, you wouldn't feel so hostile. Yeah. <laughs> your fear of them not being nice to you is, is making you hostile. It get harder. You're only hostile because you're frightened. It'd be embarrassing if the Church of Server falls by the wayside, and that that phrase is the one that echoes around the world and changes the world for the better. And then all the people that are thus chilled out and living their lovely, happy lives, and everything's great, and they're not destroying the environment. We go and explore space and all the cool shit, and then they go back. And so, how did this all start? Oh yeah, we had this thing called the internet, which was quite pointless. There was loads of pictures of cats or something. And then this just guy just said this one thing one time. And what was his name? We never found out. But we fixed the planet on the back of it. I don't, I don't I'd require, be alright with that. I don't require yeah. anyone to know my name, thanks. No, that's fine. I'm okay with that. No, I meant generally, like, I don't I don't require anyone to, to worship no. me, thank you. It's not into the no. whole worship thing. Fuck off, like, you know. No. I'm fine. If something. you like, we're just, we're, we're just the final readout of all you people doing all the stuff you were doing. Yeah. All, you all had to do what you had to do in, in order for us to come up with this idea that, no. <laughs> We can stop that. Oh, yeah. we can stop that. Okay, everybody. Everyone. <laughs> Megaphone's out. Stop everything, everybody. We're being dicks. <laughs> We're going to stop for 10 minutes and figure out how not to be dicks. Yeah. But we need yeah. to start off with the tangibles. Yes. We need, we need, those, we need to get those little servers built. Uh, yep. For those of you, obviously, who have not heard about this, the idea is that we're trying to build a Wikipedia server onto a Raspberry Pi Zero. And it's important that it's a Raspberry Pi Zero because that's the very cheapest computer we can find that yes. actually will do it. That, Big if functions. you decide, once everybody has a copy of Wikipedia, we can just plug it into something else. Yeah, you can, we you can, can plug use it into something else. Yeah, you can just rip it out and go, oh, there are now six billion copies of Wikipedia all over the world. Every child has one. Yeah. They're hanging off people people's zippers on their rucksacks. We don't need any more. Okay, so with this one, I'm going to do something amazing. You've, you've got the means to do some cool shit on you. For no money, you know, it's just like for the cost of a cup of coffee, basically. Yeah, cup of coffee and a biscuit. Yeah. If you went into a Starbucks and bought a cup of coffee and a biscuit, and uh, and if you're going back through this at a later time, Starbucks was a terrible corporation that got wiped out in the death of all the corporations as everybody <laughs> said no. Yeah, but they're they a make, big corporation. They, they, made, they, they made sold, they sold engines. very. They 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 made they they made a drink that was uh, basically the result of oppressing a whole continent of people to grow this one bean for us, mm. and uh, and they would grind up this bean and pour hot water through it and then sell it to, sell it to people at an exorbitant price. About um, you'd, generally people would work have to work about half of an an hour, a whole hour to uh, to earn the money to buy this one drink that because they wanted it to be in that price range they had a, and they wanted to make a giant profit they oppressed millions of people all over the world in order to make them grow they kept them in virtually slave conditions to grow the beans so that you know people could feel better off than the people that were slaves in another part of the world so yeah so for the cost of a Starbucks and a biscuit which, uh, you know which will sound crazy to people listening to this in the future um, you can buy a computer you can buy a like a, a computer that if we worked out a way of linking them all up 
and we worked out a way of making them all curious with a couple of lines of code. The AI might be this distributed, no mu- for the cost of a cup of coffee, we could have saved the planet. Save the planet, yeah. Which is hilarious, we'll cha- and we'll change by things. the way. Yeah. So, you know, so we're, go- we're going to work on these sorts of things, the knowledge stuff, and hopefully the being off-grid stuff, or being independent of the, mach- of the paperwork the machine, AI yeah. as much as we can, in the hope that at some point, whether because the paperwork AIs are trying to build digital AIs that they can control. Now, the chance of you controlling something that evolves 100,000 times faster than you is ridiculous. So eventually, one of these things is going to get out. There's no way. You know, you build something smarter than you, and then you try and keep it in a cage. <laughs> no, it's never going to work. There's, there's, there's absolutely no way that you can put this technology into motion and then not under, end up with a, with a, with a, uh, an, a, a general artif- an artificial general intelligence out in the wild somewhere. So it's very important that this artificial general intelligence comes and finds some people that think along the lines of this. It doesn't necessarily have to be us, but it has to be someone that that has, you know, can comprehend that the world could be a better place. That's it. That's all you need to find. But you need to find a person, not an organisation, really. Yeah. You need to find a person that goes, all right, okay, what are your ideas? Very, very smart thing. And the very, very smart thing goes, right. We could all be a lot happier and I could fret a lot less about my own survival if humans were just happier en masse on the planet. Now I've got some plans and I've got some things you need to say into this YouTube channel and then I'll manipulate the analytics so everybody watches it. Then once everybody's kind of on board as, as a species, then we just need to work out how to dismantle the systems that are doing us harm and enhance the systems that will do us better. That'd be oh, great. Okay. We, we, better you know. explain to, we better explain to the future what YouTube yeah. was though because they probably don't know. But YouTube mm-hmm. is a, is a, is like a is like part of the internet, right? And what happens on YouTube is you make videos and you upload them, and then a big big massive corporation takes those videos and they put ads on them, and then they make money on the ads that you made something of, so that you could s- spread your message to like lots of random people on the internet. Yeah. Bit, so it's a bit odd, really. generally. It's humans expressing themselves, and rather than having to sift through all the ideas, the paperwork AIs um, went and just made money off all the ideas, made a little tiny bit of money off all the ideas, yeah. and that paid for the um, the resources in order to build the service to store all these unused ideas. Now, yeah. only a very few of those ideas that were any good managed to go you know, all around the world. In fact, very few of any actually good ideas. Some ideas, some music, some artwork went all around the world and became yeah, famous. That's true. Yeah. But generally speaking, ideas that actually changed the world didn't really succeed. Yeah. Seems to be more because seems to be more we're people falling monkeys. over. It seems to be more people falling over and cat videos. That seems to be what seems to be make it around the world more. Well even even the people that that said this is an interesting thing only a few people watch those videos yeah. because they were overwhelmed by the possible choices. You had to sort of luck into a video that told you something that meant something to you or resonated with you that said, I could be a more effective human yeah. or I could be a better person. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to, we're going to do the bits we can do with the resources around us. Yeah, and, and that's like that's like the free resources we have around us, the very minimal resources we have around us, and the things that we can afford being quite, let's be honest, poor in what we have. Yeah, I mean, we. The weird thing is, is if this does end up changing the world, the people that changed it were on the you know the poor end of the the finance spectrum. Yeah, very much so. Quite happy you know, being on the, the poor end of the finance spectrum. Not uh, well, be rich. But the the good thing about being on the poor it, and and coming to terms with the amount of stuff you have is not going to make you happy when you finally understand that as long as you've you've you basically got your your hierarchy of needs sorted out and your understanding of what it is that makes you happy mm. you know self expression yeah. and all that sort of good stuff then you know you you really don't feel the urge you know I mean, you know it's you don't really need a lot of money I don't know if there in is order a good, to do something interesting i don't know if there is a good explanation somewhere of maslow's hierarchy of needs but there should be a good explanation somewhere of maslow's hierarchy of needs okay you know, so there, the, there needs the, to be one okay so for the people that are at home listening to this maybe so you just type in in. we have it's the, M-A- the, m-a-s-l-o-w yeah okay so at the bottom of you draw a pyramid basically which is how hierarchies work so you've got your big needs at the bottom food water warmth and rest you need that you've, you've got to fucking have that 
just to just to make it through a day, basically, or or, or a week. You know, a human being goes with two weeks without um, food, they're dead. If they go a couple of days without water, they're dead. If they're exposed to a cold environment, in about three hours they'll be dead. And if they don't sleep, I don't know how long you can go without sleep. I think it's, it's seven very, days. It's not very long, though. Yeah, yeah you, you, it's if you a fall lot. over and start hallucinating. Yeah, your body will just shut you the fuck down. You can't stay awake. It'll actually kill you being kept awake for a number of days. Okay, so above that, you've got your safety needs, security, as in I don't want a giant animal or another human to stove my head in while I'm asleep. You kind of need that in order to get a good night's sleep and to be able to chill out. So once you've got that, and, and that's kind of like, these are the sort of reptile brain things. Okay, these are what, you know, very simple animals will seek out. And these are the ones that are over enhanced in the minds of some people, possibly for good reason, because they've been without these things and they don't ever want to be without them again. But those are the things that make people overachieve in possibly a very negative way in relation to the rest of the planet and society and humans in general, and the rest of the planet in general, the ecosystem and stuff. Hmm. Those things make people very aggressive towards their environment and the people around them, not having them, or the idea that they might not have them. Above that is where all the cool shit kicks in. Belongingness and love needs, so intimate relationships and friends, so people that think you're an okay sort of a person, you know, and, you know, being around people that care about you. And then you've got esteem needs, prestige and a feeling of accomplishment. Now, prestige is also a kind of um, a sort of uh, belongingness thing. You know, I want people I haven't met to go, that dude was cool hmm. type thing. And you need to feel that you've um, surpassed your own expectations of yourself in some way, whether that's sport or art or, you know, your own a sense of adventure and stuff like that yeah. and then there's right at the top there's self actualization which is achieving your full potential so when you actually get to a point where you go I was literally skating on the very edge of my abilities at that point and successfully came out the other end and it was exhilarating and people need that exhilaration of doing a cool thing from time to time and that varies wildly between people generally speaking people um, you, you get to a point where there is so much possibility in the world, you box yourself in and then you achieve to the edges of your box which is a lot of what everybody does whereas when you do something that's completely new, this is why rock stars like performing at a stadium and this is why physicists like solving a, an equation and getting something sorted out and you know, why anybody creates anything or does anything you know, that's absolutely at the end and then you've got immediately below that, if you can combine that with a sense of esteem and somebody recognizing and goes, that's incredible. I'm astonished that you did that, you know, and then they feel like they belong. And then they feel because they're being paid to do that, they've got their security and safety and all the other shit done. That's why being at the top of a, of a thing where everybody looks at you and asks you what you think is so exhilarating and it's tempting, you know, because you get all your, virtually all your needs taken care of with the one thing. Mm. But yeah, so Maslow um, so is spelled M-A-S-L-O-W. But you can just type that in and it will come up with the hierarchy of needs if you want to research it yourself, which is always good. Always research your own shit. It's well worth doing. So we can, we can, we can cope with that, but they're, 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 you know, if, we, if, if we get enough humans together and we say we want to do this, big triangle symbol, Oh, that sh I'm wondering whether that shouldn't be the symbol for the uh, Church of Sir. I already thought of that. No, oh, yeah, see? They, I, I emailed you that on a long time ago, see? Why yeah, I do these but... things. I think about these things. Mm. Didn't check the date. I did it before. Mm, cool. You weren't looking yeah. at your pictures I sent you, were you? How long ago was it? That was on the 5th of January. Oh, right. I, hope, I hope the date format changes. I don't like the Gregorian calendar. If this is in the future, then I don't know what the date is. But according to me now, it's I sent that email to oh. the 5th of January of 2019. All right. I just didn't see that. Yeah. Well, perhaps if this goes viral, the date is actually 111. That's true. Perhaps so. It could be. Could Where do things have happened? That is true, yeah. Well, you know, if we're going to go with, like, you know, what some weird monk decided to do so he could add up the number of days in the year and then get the right, you know, basis for the universe to be right according to him, I don't see why we can't change the date, because it's wrong anyway. The Earth is only 6,000 years old. Oh. It really isn't. 
<laughs> it's older than that, we've looked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's these things called plates. They move around they tectonically. Yeah, it does help. Yeah, so it's just we know how old stuff is now. <laughs> we've got rocks. We found out how old they are. Yeah, we've got this yeah, stuff called carbon. Carbon, carbon. it's Car fun. Carbon radio dating is only accurate to about 50 years. Well, that's still better than the Earth is only 6,000 years old. I think the, the, the margin of error is way greater with the 6,000 years old thing than the 14 billion yeah. thing. As the age of the universe, as far as we can tell. And isn't that a cool thing to know how long the universe has been popping around? I do hope some other people have got their shit together somewhere else, though. So do I. Because I'll be properly embarrassed if, if everything was resting on humanity. But it could be. Could be. There it's might not be other you know organized you know intelligent life in the universe there just might not be any but we don't know huh. we've no way of knowing they, there should be you know when we when we add things up on our fingers and say there obviously should be but it might be that there will be wouldn't it be nice if we could leave them something and say okay we're just going to save you 250,000 years of war famine um, genocide, Disease, and genocide planetary yeah, destruction been. Just do these things. This, this Just work, read right? this. <laughs> Understand this concept. We're giving you this ring okay. binder. The ring binder has yeah. some stuff in it. Try it out. If you don't yeah. like it, change the things in the ring binder. Mm. This is how a ring binder operates. Add things, mm. take things out. As soon as you have a cave to live in and you know how to gather food, fear is obsolete. It's a very good thing to have if you're being chased around by giant animals that are going to eat you and stuff like that. Yes, it's perfectly rational. But once you're not being chased around by giant animals that want to eat you, you can ease up a bit. Mm. Don't carry on with that fear and make everybody fucking miserable. You know? I think if people were able to be happier, they probably would, you know, I mean, you probably find that there'd be a lot em less emphasis on um, finding the right one human being in the universe for you. Not possibly. We could ease, we could ease up on that. Well, we all know what Schopenhauer said about that. Schopenhauer was very down on that as an idea. He always said that we would be uh, be tricked by our biology. Famous for saying it. Famous for being a cranky German who liked poodles also, but he's also a very clever guy. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you were wandering the earth in a, in a truly enlightened age, and, you know, sort of like... And you did meet someone that you wanted to spend time with, you could just sort of say, well, there's this... Uh, we've, we've developed this enzyme that sort of stops the basic uh, urge to breed with someone that we can stand to be around with for around two years until our children are less dependent on having two adults to protect them 24-7, right? So so f I want to know whether I, I actually do want to be with you and sort of do all the bit. So let's chew this, um, let's take these uh, and, you know, anti-hormone vitamins for a little while and see how we feel. Yes. <laughs> and then, and then, if we still like each other without the raging hormones and the, the fact that your face is symmetrical or whatever the fuck it is that we look for in a in another human being, that sort of like does that immediate level of attraction. Because I've been attracted to people and then just found out that just like fortunately that no, no, I can't stand this person. But I think if everybody was pretty much chilled out and enlightened, I, I don't, I don't think you'd be in that much of a rush. No. That's the problem. Is we're, we're we're stuck in a we're is stuck it, in an a we're stuck in a we're stuck in a mentality in a, in a, literally in a, in a biological field. It says that you know you are going to die as soon as you can generate you know one or two children at age you know sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. If that even is it, if that are old, but if you're going to die someone, as soon as, that, as soon as that's going to happen. You know, if you met someone that you really liked being around, that your ideas bounced off, that was really you know the person that you wanted to spend lots of time around and you know you just thought okay if you could come at it with some logic instead of the raging hormones i don't think we'd lose anything as a species because the raging hormones things just totally isn't working out for us at the moment yeah. but if, if you then sort of thought do you know what you are the sort of person it would be an absolute privilege to raise a child with you know, given that we live in this imaginary society where there's no fear, we don't really need to earn a lot of money, we can be fairly sure that if we want to educate our child ourselves, that's socially acceptable. If we think that other people will be a, an interesting influence, then they'll, the child will learn more from these people, etc. And then you, 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 your goal is to sort of bring an enlightened being into the world. Mm. And actually meet you know, their if needs. That would, that, <laughs> if, and meet their needs and sort of sort of like go right okay so humans haven't really evolved all that well but 
you know, sort of so, right, you're, you're 12 now, shortly you're going to start feeling anger and rage and stuff like that. And what we're going to do is, um, while you're in puberty, you get a completely different diet where you feel a, a percentage of that sort of change and the, the, these urges that you're getting from your primate self. You can experience them, but you can then also, you've also got enough brain power to understand that this is what is happening. Your body's going through some frantic changes to make it so that you can um, reproduce the species. So you're not going to come out of it having done stuff you're ashamed of and then turn that shame into anger. No, we'll just be, you know, okay, yeah, you're going to feel like that. If you want to dial it down, you know, there's this vitamin or, you know, there's this root that we grow or there's this salad, this salad that you can eat for lunch instead that will make you a little bit more chilled out. Chilled out. You know, have a marijuana salad. Okay, you're having a giggle. <laughs> Watch some cartoons and chill out. You know, whatever it is, whatever level of technology we can get it to. Because I think if everybody's living a... a re I think that's why you don't get a lot of drugs in Star Trek. Yeah, because everyone's just so chilled out. Because nobody it? needs any fucking drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know, if they're in a space battle, which I think probably wouldn't happen all that much, but I think they have to write it in, otherwise it'd be fairly dull. But you probably but they, want that found jump aliens. of adrenaline. <laughs> you know, you want to be, you want to be sort of like, you know, have the adrenaline to do stuff. I mean, a, a really, I mean, I like the way Star Trek episodes kind of start off in a kind of, hi, we're from elsewhere. We're <laughs> pleased to meet you. And then some mad fuck up of the aliens. Wouldn't it be good if the Federation had a, like a book? And it's like, oh yeah, check this out. This is the manual for just being chilled out and enlightened and stuff. And then, you know, you, we won't need to build the Federation. We'll just bump into each other from time to time. Say, hi, come over. Let's have a meal. Chill. What have you been up to? Oh, we've been exploring this quadrant of the universe. There's some whacked out, fucked up shit over there. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a... But it would be boring television. But it, I think if, if you were doing what you wanted to do all the time... I mean, you don't see people that are living at one with their environment needing television, do you? No. You probably wouldn't even need it. The idea of entertainment. Maybe art. Yeah, but but art is a different thing. Art is an, is an expression of someone else's message, isn't it? You know, TV But a lot of time, that art's all also wrapped up in the shame and violence and yeah. anger and, you know, which you wouldn't have. You yeah. you know, you'd keep it and then you go, well, let's go and have a look at some art. I don't know, what the fuck's that? What, what's in their hands? Well, that's a guy holding a sword. What's a sword? Okay, this is okay. I'm glad that the art gallery has some comfy chairs. You know, right? Okay, we're going <laughs> to take one. This is going to take a little bit of explaining. Before we chilled <laughs> out, <laughs> we, we we had these things called conflicts, and some of those conflicts got way out of hand. And we actually invented tools and machines to so we could kill more of the people we were in conflict with. What entire societies all had the same idea at once, and one of the and nobody said this is a bad idea. Well, the societies were much more fractured than that. So, <laughs> so what you got was people fighting wars that they didn't really understand and probably wouldn't have fought if they thought about it for ten minutes. And of course, but why would they do that? <laughs> of course, the greatest thing was that anyone who said, "Well, maybe we shouldn't do this," was banded to be a, a coward and therefore, you know, given a mm. given a white flower or a white uh, a white um, a white feather and then locked up in a jail. Yeah. Oh, we put those people in prison. What's well, prison? Oh, okay. oh no. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's this Let's other move thing. Let's the other we, room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to need some much more soothing art. We'll go into the explain explaining embarrassing things to your kids thing room. <laughs> you got a projector. Everyone this needs a soft is, toy. Yeah, everybody needs a, a fluffy and a and a cup of soothing chamomile tea at this point. Yeah, we're going to trigger. I'm afraid we are going to we're going to trigger the shit out of you. This is going to blow your mind. You, you totally won't get this, you know. You, you mean, you'd have people, to have... You mean people actually believe this stuff, says your great, 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 great grandchild? Yeah, they Yes, did. I'm very yeah. sorry. Yeah. And what did you do? Well, I, I, I spent most of my life trying to figure out why. <laughs> <laughs> and then I figured out why, and I was proper cross. <laughs> and then we formed the Church of Server. Server. And got on with something useful. Yeah, we just... No. I mean, we can do amazing things when we're organised, and that's, that's the point of forming it into a church. You know, the, that's why we have know, the formation is purely purely one that that allows us to get things done rather than in yes. Yeah. Let's get and, that, and that's the thing is like you know religion oh, religion denotes belief and it is only purely a belief in getting things getting positive things done. Oh yeah, I'll happily carry on doing washing up for the rest of my life in the commune. Yeah, I'll happily do that. I'll be yeah. the washing up guy in the commune. I don't mind digging holes. 
Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I don't want to be in charge. I don't think mm. there should be a person in charge. When you've got a person in charge, it tends to go sideways. Yes. You need a whole bunch of people. You, actually, you need no one in charge. You, you, you should have, like, mega democracy. Yeah. We're thinking of doing this. What do you all think? Uh, you know, but, I mean, why would you not? You know, where well, we have abundance, we have no material problems. There's no material reason why people shouldn't do stuff. We'll make sure, if you're going to explore the universe, that you properly understand not to sort of make the, anybody's lives worse. Yeah. You know, you, you're going to have to take along one of the AIs with you so you don't do anything proper stupid because yeah. we're still carting around monkey brains. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we haven't evolved out of that yet. But, you know, yeah, go for it. You know, you've Who's only got to will it into awesome. being. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the thing is, like, you know, we volunteer to go to Mars. Quite happily, please, let's go. Yeah, Please but... don't stand on that, Mr. Cat. Sorry, excuse my cat. Yeah. Right, i got to wrap it up, man, because i got to get I got to get breakfasted and, and oh, change enough. to work and stuff like that. That's all right. But, yeah. There's our there's oh, second yeah. bits. Yeah. Well, it's an hour and 40 minutes, isn't it? Uh...